we are special to him, each one of us. I think of us like a snow, so snowflakes when they start to fall. Every flake, they say, is different. Every, crisp, every flake, if you put it under a microscope, is entirely different. That's how we are. God has made us totally different from one another. We're to love one another. But we don't have to understand one another. In fact, it's almost impossible, I think. We are to unite with Christ, even in his cruc crucifixion and resurrection. Today's New International Version, in Romans 6, 5, it says, If we had been united with him in death, like his, we will certainly also be united with him in resurrection like his. Six, for we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. It's just done away with. <laughs> it's gone. You say, oh, well, I keep sinning. Yeah. God says if you say you're not a sinner, then they're calling him a liar. We all sin, but God's died on the cross, his crucifixion and resurrection took away our sins and we are no longer slaves to those sins. Don't sweat it. Just trust the Lord. Seven, because anyone who has died has been set free. Set free from sin. Is sin still there? Yeah, but you're set free from it. <laughs> Eight, now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. 9. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Oh, just once. Death no longer has mastery over him. And Paul, the writer of the book of Romans, that we've been reading here the scripture in Romans, writes more. He goes on, today's new international version, Romans 8, 36. And Paul says, as it is written... For your sake, we face death all day long. He's talking to, to, the, to the Romans. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. <laughs> slaughtered. Paul also writes to the Colossians and Colossae. Colossa, yeah. Colossians in 2.23, Since you died with Christ, to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? This is important. This goes right along with you've been set free from sin. Oh, yeah, but you don't know. This is what, what Paul is telling the Colossians. Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, the laws... Why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? You belong to Christ. 21. Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Examples here. 22. These rules, which have to do with things that are all destined to perish, this is going to perish like our flesh, with use, are based on merely human commands. These are human commands and teachings. Human commands, that's what we're getting in church more than anything now, are human commands and teachings. 23, such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom. Ah, that's wise. With their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value. What are the values? In the election we talk about values. They lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. It's an important scripture Paul writes to the Colossians there. He also writes in 2 Corinthians 4.11 to the church in Corinth, For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. His life can be revealed in our body. They should say, don't let people see me. Let them see Jesus. Let them see Jesus in me, that he will be revealed in my body. 
in our mortal bodies. He who was dead lives. The death, burial, and bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ are the essential truths by which men are saved. This is it, folks. Nothing else. And all of this to segue into our last scriptures scheduled for today, which are in Matthew, to show that all disciples will follow in his footsteps. And we are all disciples. Today's New International Version, Matthew 20, 20. Then the mother of Zebedee's, Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down asked a favor. 21. What is it you want? He asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. <laughs> she wanted the best for her kids. 22. You don't know now what you're asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I'm going to drink? We can, they answered. 23. Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right and left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my Father. Jesus knew at the time that we all would drink the cup of suffering, but that also we would be baptized in his power. Luke wrote in the book of Acts 1-4, On one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift from my Father, for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. And further on, Luke writes in Acts 1.8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria. It's interesting that these are all places that we're talking so much about today in the news. And to the ends of the earth, ends of the earth, he knew it was round, we didn't at that time. James and John, the brothers of Zebedee, wanted a certain ministry. They wanted this ministry, they wanted to sit on each side of Jesus. We can have a ministry we have our hearts set on. Do you have one? You have, I just have this desire to do this or that or the other. Believing God truly has called us to it. And we can have it. But we, we can only do what God has prepared from the beginning. He's prepared from the get, beginning for us to do. A lot of people just don't realize that, that he has prepared something for us. Each one of us, he has a job for us. Everybody, all his children. That's why it's so important that we go to the ends of the earth and, and proclaim the good news that sin can be taken away from us. <laughs> we don't have to sweat this stuff that we read about in the law and the Old Testament and all that stuff. If you believe in Jesus Christ and he comes to live in you, then God is in you and God can't sin. He doesn't sin. And he is in you. What about this body? It turns to dust. It goes away. And our soul and spirit goes to be with Jesus. In closing, let's read a scripture that I hope you'll memorize and remember. Today's New International Version. Ephesians 2. Paul writes to the church in Ephesus. Ephesians 2.10 For we are God's handiwork. We are God's handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. That's the scriptures. That's the word of God. You can't go beyond that. He's prepared it in advance for us to do. So start listening to the Lord in your heart. Get that close relationship with him. Drink his cup, whatever it is. We'll see you next time. Now I live. Try.
promises And nothing seems worthwhile Except to be In your kingdom of love My Lord 